if you have done it all but you have a few shillings to save that you can invest you talk about an accommodation being one of the areas that they can get into let's talk about investment areas they can invest in the costs averagely because for most people they look at all these beautiful places they can go to but it goes back to can i be able to actually put something like this up because the cost is also something scary for many well it shouldn't be because we all have different capacity but also in terms of the market segment we have different segments there are those who want it basic whereby you can just offer a nice compound you know and and uh, clean good you know uh, sanitary you know facility and a basic shed where somebody can actually have their picnic lunch or whatever and i can carry my own tent and come and just pitch it there and pay my 10,000 or 20,000 or whatever depending also where this location is so it can be as basic as setting up a picnic site setting up a campsite where you don't need a lot of investment because there yeah, there is a market segment that are looking for that kind of experience they also it could be because of budget but it could also be because that is the kind of experience somebody wants they want to rough it up it can be actually somebody who can afford it but once in a while they want to rough it up so they would rather go camp than go and sleep in a five star lodge yeah and then of course there are those who would who would uh who would want uh relatively comfortable nice facility um and there are those who would want the high end you know luxury so you know there is a whole range that you can play you know we can all work with yeah depending on the capacity that we all have and this also speaks to the need of Ugandans yeah because one of the challenges we have had especially with the destinations in the national parks originally we started with most of the facilities being high end mm. and that made it very difficult for Ugandans to travel where i'm going to pay 150 dollars you know per night per night yeah. yeah it just didn't make sense for them to visit but Uganda Wildlife Authority has worked around this to be able to provide for Ugandans or anybody else who is low budget you know so they can actually have their campsites so they can um they can have low budget they have built those you know those bandas mm-hmm. and uh you can sleep in a national park at 30,000 per night you know which is quite affordable and of course uh you can you could also say 30,000 per night can be you know could be very expensive for somebody but i always say mm. you know traveling is also a lifestyle you know because if you choose every evening mm. you're going to drink five beers before you go to bed you could actually save that money yeah. and still travel with it mm. so it's the choice of what kind of lifestyle yeah. you really want put away those five beers <laughs> just for a bit save them that money save it for one night <laughs> i know for me like mm, those five beers my friday ah, but like you say it's a lifestyle at the end of the day yeah so now with that option of investment there's also the option of trade within the tourism sector within the country let's also talk about that well The tourism sector is uh, is is one sector that has a a wide range of uh, value chain if we look at the value chain let's start from the airline yeah we have Uganda Airlines yeah so the airline you know the airport the taxi guy at the airport who has to transport you know the traveler to the hotel the hotel mm. yeah and this person is traveling to the source of the nile they will stop somewhere you know mm. to maybe buy you know a 
a fruit or a snack somewhere along the way. You can talk about uh, Nama Wajolo. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, and we would want to encourage that, especially for international travelers. You know, it's important for them to experience mm. our own food, our culture, you know. So if 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 they buy a snack from there, somebody from there is benefiting you know they get to the source of the nile they are paying you know for a boat ride you know they're buying the crafts we have our ladies there selling crafts mm-hmm. somebody's you know benefiting from that sale you know and everywhere they go and then in the hotels in all the especially in the hotels you know where are the foods coming mm-hmm. from you know the person growing tomatoes rearing chicken you gets know gets to the market that eventually exactly. from that market gets to the so hotel. the value chain is so long the multiplier effect is really huge mm-hmm. so it's one sector that if we managed very well as a country would lead us to the economic transformation we are looking at getting to mm-hmm. 